Hello and welcome to our new Let's Play. And it is Kaiser Reich for Victoria 2. Now this is in beta, as it says. It's in beta. Remember beta. Um, it's actually a very stable beta. I have yet to have this game crash on me. So. We start, obviously, in January 1st, 1921. This also is a mod for Victoria 2, or not Victoria 2, for Hearts of Iron 2 and um, Darkest Hour Hearts of Iron game. So, um, as you can see, the world looks very different. So, I'll read you Victoria 2 Kaiser Reich. It says, after the stunning victory of 1917, the dust is far from settled on this troubled world. Though the Kaiser reigns supreme in Europe, his former... Enemies and allies struggle to recover from the war to end all wars. France has fallen into fascism. The Russian Civil War rages in the east. And the grand optimism of the British Empire is fading and the Italians edge uh, towards civil war within the next decade. Pick your country carefully, uh, lest you end up a footnote in history. So basically, the storyline for Kaiserreich is Germany wins the First World War. And it comes out the supreme superpower. Uh, as you can see, it is the first great nation followed uh, by the French, actually. And as you can see, uh, you know, a lot of stuff has happened, you know. Very different from the book. So, but I've thought about uh, who I'm going to play. And first I was like, oh, maybe we should just play as Germany. But that would be too easy. They're too powerful. Um, I, As you can see here, I'm playing as France. So, I played a little bit as Japan, so we're going to play as the Empire of Japan, and we're going to uh, do what Japan did in the Second World War, just without the failure. So, create a, you know, an Asia for Asians type deal. So, this should be interesting, considering, uh, you know, France and Britain are still very influential in Asia. The U.S. not as much, because the whole isolationist policy during this time. So, let's jump right into it. Do, do, do. Also, the music is great. This, get, uh, this mod has great music. So, let me fix my uh, government real quick here. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Alright, so, from what I've noticed, they've completely re or overhauled the tech trees. They've even added in new sprites for, uh, let's see, for submarines and aircraft carriers and battle cruisers and destroyers. It's really cool. They've added in a bunch of sprites. They've added in different tank sprites. They've added in uh, army sprites. There's tons of new stuff in this. That's why I really wanted to play it and show it to you. So, uh, it's 1921, so... We have the, uh, what is this? The limited access roads and the synthetic polymers. And I believe this game ends in 1970. I think it ends in 1970, 1980. Because uh, it looks like all the texts go at least to 1960. So I'm thinking this game ends actually in 1970-80. So let's see what's going on. I have way too many ships in my navy. And this is just a transport fleet. This one is the Imperial Battle Fleet, as you can see here. And I have a lot of ships. And we need to cut down because I will not be able to supply them and they'll all start to die. So let's get a, get rid of the Taiwan. And the Mixa. M M Mikasa. And then we'll get rid of some cruisers. And I would, normally I would keep the entire fleet, but I mean, let's get some uh, rid of some destroyers instead. There we go, let's do that. But the, did that change at all? I want to say no. But, um, let's start it. And good, our economy is doing better. All right, so Imperial Japan today. It gives you this game gives you a you know 
what's happening in your country at the beginning of the game. So it says, Today, Japan finds itself unhindered by our involvement in the defeated Entente. Our geographical position in relation to Germany, or rather lack of it, meant they were happy to accept a white peace alongside our British allies, leaving us uh, with the gain of several island chains in the Pacific. We are an emerging power in the world, and all of the East must learn to tremble before our imperial prowess. We, uh, as we secure resources from our booming industrial base, the general staff are already, already preparing our first move into the region, the invasion of Manchuria, and it says the honor of our empire remains intact. Because uh, France will actually get a thing that says defeated in the Great War. Uh, I think Britain might too, but I'm not entirely certain about that. So let's ro lower tariffs there. Try and bring... Uh, so great wars have been discovered, obviously. Any war that happens now will be a great war. So let's see. The Russian Civil War is, you know, going between the Russian whites, which are the democracy, the westernizers... And then you have the Soviet Union here uh, with the Bolshevik communists that is uh, going strong right now. And the Russian whites uh, almost always lose. Um, they won't accept an alliance. I can declare war on them. Let's send them some money. Maybe we can help the Russian whites uh, win. You know, fight, fight. Their capital, I think, is uh, Vladivostok. So, but Victoria or um, Kaiser Reich is very event driven, as you can see uh, here. I have the decision to invade Manchuria, and uh, yeah, so the year has to be after 1931, and Manchuria has to exist for me to invade them, and then I just I declare war on them immediately. Uh, we also have the execute rebels event. So, if your militancy is above 5, you can kill a lot of people, you lose 4 militancy, you gain some infamy and uh, consciousness. So, let's see what's going on in the world. France is a fascist dictatorship under the military council that took over after the war. Britain still exists. I believe we're allied to the British. Um, I think we are, actually. Yes, we are. We're allied to the British. They have a massive navy, as you can see there. I have there's a hundred and forty ship fleet, which is the grand fleet, a hundred and thirty nine ships. So, uh, so as you can see though, Germany is huge. It holds these uh, states as uh, satellites, and there you go. The United States just got the Roaring Twenties. So let me give you a little bit of history. Um, I f believe this differs. Boom time policies uh, from darkest hour I'm not so sure but in Kaiser Reich Germany or America never joins uh, the first world war and with Russia's bowing out to the you know their civil war Germany presses on the Western Front and eventually in 1917 1918 they break through in France defeat the French and then they go and they defeat the Italians so mainland Europe is locked down the Germans now are only fighting Britain. Britain is alone in the war. And uh, in the, uh, I guess in 1919, 1920-ish, the Germans secure a peace with honor. Uh, with Britain, which is a white peace, they end all hostilities. Uh, and Britain gets to keep the colonies she took, you know, in the West or in Africa. Uh... Japan gets to keep the island chains that they took in the Pacific from the Germans and the British exactly the same. So that's that. But uh, Germany has complete you know, victory over France. They bring the French to their knees and they take uh, parts of Vietnam here. They've taken Morocco, parts of uh, French Cameroon. Uh, Belgium is now a a satellite state. So here we go. We get the Roaring Twenties as Japan. It says, positive news from the U.S. economy. Our biggest trading partner has had a positive impact on our young nation's growth. Our silk and industrial goods trade with the U.S. is rapidly increasing as demand for luxury goods from Asia is increasing significant. All of Asia will bow before me. Uh, I get this until 1926, so five years, and it's just a bunch of good stuff. 
And the UK also did the Imperial Conference. Um, in 1921, the first post-war Imperial Conference was held to decide the general direction of the British Empire in the years to come. But in the instance of the 1921 conference, the primary topic was the discussion of the renewal of the alliance with uh, the Japanese Empire. Call the summit so we can discuss the matter with our dominions. So, the big change to the British Empire is it holds these smaller colonies, such as uh, Malaysia and Borneo. But India has been turned into a dominion uh, under the British Raj, or just the Raj, more rather which is under control of the Governor General of India and Burma, I suppose. But uh, Britain holds, you know, these pieces in Africa as uh, core colonies that they actually control. So. And this is what I wanted to avoid was uh, losing uh, my fleet because I cannot supply them. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to bring this down because otherwise the entire fleet will wither away. I definitely don't want that. So let's just get rid of some uh, let's get rid of some destroyers. Christ. There we go. And then I can combine this fleet. Which is the transport fleet. But yeah. You definitely... Uh, if you have a big army or big navy like Britain. Uh, sometimes it's smart to cut the navy size. But let's uh, go and let's see. See, as you can see, there are new ships. The destroyer and the battle cruiser. I'm going to build a battle cruiser uh, because I believe I have enough uh, room. So immediately, Italy and Austria Hungary have gone to war. I don't think this is considered a great war, though. No, this is just a war. I think a great war involves two or three different powers. So right now, um, the Italians are trying to liberate Vienna with the help of um, Spain. Austria, meanwhile, has brought her dominions of Hungary and Slavic, Slavic dominion together to try to combat the Italians. Do these guys, I guess these guys just don't start off with an alliance. Usually, uh... Germany is allied to all these guys at the beginning of the war. But right now, Arabia is uh, fighting for its independence against the Ottoman Empire. Um, I've never seen Arabia win. You know, the Arab revolt that uh, Britain started. They want to also acquire Ottoman Baghdad, which is, uh, I believe, just that region. Yeah. Just this little region here, as you can see right here. They just want to acquire Ottoman Baghdad and be free. So, yeah, that's happening. I don't think I'm going to help them, though. It, you know, I'm, I'm so far away, it doesn't matter. So, let's do some, let's build some Japanese Royal Guard. These will be our uh, vanguard forces when we invade uh, Manchuria. We can also build an army in Korea. So let's build, we definitely think Cavalry, definitely, and uh, artillery. Now let's get some Korean regulars as well. So there you go. We'll build troops in North Korea. 
and uh, we'll wait. We also should build troops in uh, Taiwan. I'll just build some regulars. Uh, let's build an artillery along with them. So, in the 20s, not much happens in the 20s. Uh, we just have to play through it. And, uh, you know, just kind of wait. Let's see how are the the Russian whites faring against the Union. Not very well, it looks like. They'll accept my alliance, though. But I can't join the war. Because the Russian Civil War is to unite the nation. I can only join if it's status quo. So here's a battle between the, the reds and the whites in the 20s. We can actually click on the battle and watch it. The uh, the whites look like they're going to win because they have a cannon. But the Russian whites is a combination of uh, royalists and uh, democracy or and the uh, people who want to establish a democracy in Russia and, you know, that kind of stuff. And the Union is the Union. I've never seen a wh uh, white Russia take over, in all honesty. I think how it happens, you know, via Kaiser Reich lore is Germany actually invades the Soviet Union and um, intervenes in the Civil War. I don't, I've never seen Germany do that. I don't know if that's a decision or whatnot. But uh, when the Russian whites are close to death, I'll probably take uh, Pogaby. I'll move the uh, fleet and invade. And not to be, you know, an ass, it's just I have a core. And, and they're going to die anyway. So let's see what's going on in the world. We figured out great wars. The USA is afraid of um, the UK. Germany loves the Ottoman Empire. And uh, war between Bolivia and Paraguay. Let's check it out. Yeah, the war's already over. So I believe uh, France, or the France, the France, the French have a decision they can do. I believe there's still a military council, but over time, their culture changes more and more with every month, and they gain um, factions again. Like at the beginning, France will start out as just you know 100% fascist, and over time, uh, it'll change. And uh, eventually they have two decisions. They can go to the far right, which is it turns into the French Empire and it becomes a monarchy under one of the Napoleons, you know, the last rein uh, remaining Napoleon dynasty, or it turns into a communist dictatorship like the Soviet Union. Um, I think uh, via Kaiserreich lore, it turns into a communist nation. You know, to fight uh, Germany. And then uh, England collapses. But playing so far, I've yet to see England collapse. They're actually way more stable than I thought. So the Afga or the Afghan Anglo Treaty has been signed. I think officially they could win this war, actually. At the beginning of the game, you could win that war easily. But the Raj is a partially westernized nation. It is not a civilized na uh, nation. So it has the, the lower tech group. So what I'm going to do different uh, with this game is than you know, what happened in real life is I'm going to improve my relations with the United Kingdom until I can get full, you know, straight on alliance, renew my alliance with them. And after that, uh, I'll probably invade China just because so the Chinese are annexing uh, Guangxi right now so let's uh, rally my forces that I built across uh, Japan here but yeah Kaiser Reich has awesome awesome music uh, that comes along with it so the Russian whites are now looking at certain defeat they just 
the, the Russian army is too large at this point. So, actually, I could declare on the Soviet Union. Oh, no, I couldn't. I could justify a war for total annexation. But I'm not going to do that. I'll let the Union uh, win just because it's easier to do and it's easier to deal with. And what instead I'll do is I'll declare war on the Russian whites and I'll take back my core. Now that I have, you know, an army, my imperial fleet is larger than the Russian navy. I also have troops in Korea already, so it's just a matter of marching across the border. So let's get synthetic polymers, gives me Velcro, plastic, you know, all that good stuff that we know and love nowadays. So how many men do I have? Six, seven, nine. I have nine. I think I only have six transports. So first is first. Let's break off our uh, our uh, thing with them. Let's cancel the war subsidies to them because it's a lost cause. I'm going to. Oh, did they get rid of my alliance? No, I'm still allied with them. There we go. Now let's dissolve our alliance. Let's get the the troops ready. And the first thing we're going to do is retake our core as Pogabi. We do not want those evil communists having it. Maybe I'll take some other stuff. Maybe um, Outer Manchuria. I think that's impossible though because their core is here. Or their capital more rather. So there's my fleet. Let's get ready to move. And uh, let's declare war on them. No, I don't want to give them subsidies. Let's uh, take Pogabi. So as the Empire of Japan, you know, our our navy is the utmost priority. Did Russian or did the French Vietnam change yet? Nope. Or just France more rather changed from the military council? Nope. So. There you go. The Russian, the Russian white fleet has been has docked. They're hiding. Japanese forces will take over. But as you can see, you're if you're like, hey, that sprite's no different than anything else. I'll I'll show you. Here, let's go here. I'll send the ship there. See, as you uh, you know, as he said, beta is beta. So some of the guns are like floating; they're not where they're supposed to be, but it's okay. But isn't that cool? New sprite for Victoria too. I think it's very, uh, very cool actually. I'll just keep my my fleet there. The Austro-Hungarian fear. So my goal is to basically, you know, conquer outer Manchuria. So here we go. We have Western ideals. In the post-war era of Japan in 1920, there was a huge influx of Western ideals into the nation as more people began to be affiliated with the liberals, communists, socialists in the country. Partly due to the rise of the democratic ideals at the end of the autocratic Meiji period and many other uh, and in other part due to the wishes of the Soviet state to export the revolution to the world seeing Japan as a vital Asian target for communist takeover and I get traitors liars and thieves um, basically people in Japan become more socialist more liberal more communist which is that's, that's fine so let's march across I'm just going to conquer out of Manchuria from the whites you know their army is off somewhere over here maybe or not, or it's completely dead. Uh, let's decline. Maybe I can get something else out of them. Let's see. What do you guys think I should get? Let's look at the region map mode. I could seize Kamchatka. I mean, I don't know why I'd want it, but it's there. I could release it as Siberia later. So let's do that. Let's uh, add a war goal. Acquire the state. Is it not a state? Is it a place in the sun? 
Oh, here it is. A Place in the Sun, Outer Manchuria. So there you go. I, I demand Outer Manchuria as well, which is this region here. That way, uh, the invasion of Manchuria will be swift. So you go, the Battle of the Tartar Straits, we won the battleships. You know, the Imperial Japanese fleet's no joke with, you know, four battleships, 23 uh, support ships, destroyers, and cruisers combined. We uh, soundly defeated them. And uh, I believe we'll have enough war score to just negotiate it all. They won't accept. What do we have? War score is four right now. Well, would you rather surrender to me or the whites? Or the uh, the reds, 